back to the Alter Your Health podcast, your source of information and inspiration to promote the holistic transformation of your health and the health of our planet. I'm your host, Dr. Benjamin Alter, and I am confident that today's episode is going to do exactly that, that transform health. And today's episode, we have a very, very special guest an amazing man who has been doing incredible work in the field of holistic medicine throughout his long career, and that is Dr. Leonard Laskow. Dr. Laskow is a Stanford-trained life fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, former chief of OBGYN at the Community Hospital of the Monterey Peninsula in Carmel, California, and has served as faculty at the University of California, San Francisco. He was a founding diplomat of the American Board of Integrative Holistic Medicine and a former member of HeartMath Institute's Scientific Advisory Board. He has served as a U.S. Naval Flight Surgeon in Vietnam as well. Doc Dr. Laskow has done seminal research with biophysicists, neurochemists, and crystallographers on the impact of information and the coherent energy of love on cancer cells, DNA, the Growth of Bacteria and Water. His acclaimed book, Healing with Love, has been published in nine languages. His latest book, Forgiving Love, was published in 2016. He recently received the Worldwide Forgiveness Alliance's Champion of Forgiveness Award in 2016. Currently, Dr. Laskow is residing in Switzerland and is a consultant in behavioral medicine, lecturing and giving seminars internationally. You can learn more about Dr. Laskow and his work by visiting his website www.laskow.net. Excuse me, that's L-A-S-K-O-W dot N-E-T. All right, so back to the episode. Dr. Laskow, what else can I say? He's an amazing individual. Um, we had an incredible conversation about his journey in the field of holistic medicine what health and healing really is when it comes down to it. And I particularly, uh, excuse me, I particularly loved the way that we started our episode with a brief three minute powerful meditation that Dr. Laskow calls heart centered focus. So if you are driving, I do encourage you, like Dr. Laskow says, um, don't do this meditation, but do come back to it if you don't have time to sit down in a quiet place with yourself while listening to the ep this episode now. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you once again to subscribe, to rate, and to review this podcast, whether you're watching it on YouTube or listening on iTunes or anywhere else. Please do us a favor and, um, and uh, subscribe, rate, and review. And that just allows us to have greater... Uh, visibility when it comes to sharing this podcast into the world. And also you can do that. You can share this episode with any anyone in your life that you feel may be benefited from learning more information from Dr. Laskow. So without further ado, I just invite you to sit back, relax, open your heart, take a few breaths. And here we go with Dr. Leonard Laskow. Welcome to the Alter Your Health podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Benjamin Alter, and I am so grateful to have an incredible guest joining us today, and that is Dr. Leonard Laskow, and uh, an amazing guy with a lot to share. I'm, I'm excited to dive into all of the, the wisdom and experience he has for us. And um, yeah, Len, I know you wanted to start with a, a brief meditation for us all. I thought that would be great. Super. Well, let me suggest that uh, if you're not driving, uh, just gently close your eyes for a moment and shift your attention from wherever it is to the center of your chest, your energetic heart in the center of your chest, and just gently take in three breaths, 
imagining your breath coming in and leaving as if through the center of your chest. And as you continue to breathe in and out as if through the center of your chest, allow yourself to recall a time when you had felt your heart opening, feeling really, really good about whatever it is that you were experiencing when you felt your heart really open. Could be a time when you were feeling a sense of connectedness or love, or wholeness, unity. Could be a time when you just were simply feeling at peace, at one, relaxed. Could be a time maybe when you just we're having fun. We were just enjoying. As you continue to breathe in and out through the center of your chest. Good. And what that does as you focus on the center of your chest and recall a time when you were feeling really open-hearted, flowing in the moment, is that the energy that comes from the heart, which is really picked up in every cell of your body, uh, becomes coherent. The energy starts to group as if it was one frequency in your body. And coherent energy is energy that is multiplied by itself. It's energy that's squared. So it becomes the most powerful energy in your body. That coherent energy is the energy of unconditioned love that we feel as we shift into a heart focus, as I can call it, just a heart focus. So good, now that we have that energy flowing, I think whatever it is that we want to focus on now mm -hmm. will allow us to focus through our aware witness more readily through the, through the energy of the soul soul that integrates our uniqueness and our unity. So that's where we'll be coming from, rather than a focus just on uh, our content and our conditioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. I feel like we can just go ahead and end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> But, but of course we won't. We're going to dive into this a little bit more, but I'm so grateful that, that you uh, encouraged us to start with that because, um, man, I, I know I feel really in the zone. I would, you know, the words that I would use. I guess there's other words to describe the feeling. And I hope that and uh, the listeners out there, if they didn't, you know, if, if they were driving, <laughs> they would uh, take a chance to go back to the beginning of this and, and listen to that. And maybe not even once, but as needed, you know? A, sure. Yeah. And just to, to clarify it for people, since we're focusing on this, is that there are really three steps to this. The first step is to shift your attention from wherever it is to the center of your chest. The second step is to breathe in and out through the center of your chest. And then the third step is to focus on something that always opens your heart, that brings a smile to your heart. Focus on something that always makes you feel good, that's always 
in the past made you feel good and will always make you feel good in the future. Something that never changes, hmm. it'll always make you feel good. So that's the third step. So there are three steps to this process and I call it the conscious heart focus. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what I experienced, a conscious heart focus. Right, uh, yeah. right. Great. So, um, so I guess we can, you know, dive into this discussion. And, uh, you know, Doctor Doctor Laskow is um, uh, has an incredible story to share. And and I want to give you a, a little space to share. Just a, I know you could probably go on and on about your background and how you have uh, come to where you are today. Where he is, he's actually tuning in from Switzerland. And thank you for. Um, thank you for doing so with the time change and everything. It's just incredible. Our first international guest. I'm so grateful. Um, so yeah, Dr. Dr. Laskow, would you, would you like to share just a brief introduction to how you arrived to focus on um, the heart, heart-centered focus? <laughs> sure. Well, uh, I was in a, a busy, very busy practice in San Francisco for a number of years and teaching at uh, the University of California, San Francisco uh, Medical Center. And um, I attended a, a retreat and this was in the mid seventies. And uh, at this retreat, uh, I was uh, meditating. It was uh, in the middle of the night and uh, I, the room was dark. And suddenly it felt as if someone had turned on the lights. So I opened my eyes and the room was still dark. And I closed my eyes and again, there was this inner luminosity. And then uh, it, it, I felt a presence, uh, but as it turned out, it was, it was, it was inside my head. And it, also there was a voice inside my head. Uh, I say a presence, I say a voice, but it really is something that's beyond description. So this presence I heard say, your work is to heal with love. And I, I said, uh, oh, so I'm worthy. And it, it said, you are no more or less worthy than anyone else. Your work is to heal with love. In other words, it had nothing to do with this little egoic, oh, so I'm worthy. Uh, it totally transcended that consideration. Mm -hmm. So you are no more or less worthy than anyone else. Your work is to heal with love. And the hair stood up in the back of my head. Uh, tears started to flow. And I knew it was true, but I didn't know what it meant. And it was so powerful for me, an experience beyond words, ineffable, that I didn't speak about it for several years after that. So that was the experience with healing with love about what was healing and what was love mm. and so i needed to explore what healing was and what what love was yeah. and that's really that really became the key uh for my life up until right now this point yeah. exploring healing well, with love and i'll pause fact, you i'll pause you there i just oh go ahead you can complete your statement i'm yeah. just going to say in fact the the first book that I wrote is called Healing with Love. Yeah, and, and that was how many years ago? 20 years ago now? Almost 20 years uh, ago? 1992. No, 1992. Almost, yeah, 27 years ago, 26 years ago. Yeah, and the book is very relevant today. It was yeah. way ahead of its time. Yeah, yeah. I think my, um, my experience of you, Len, is that you are way ahead of your time and you are not not way ahead of your time, but you are a, a light bearer for us going forward, for sure, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just curious about 
that time that you had in the in the retreat um were at that point in your career were you unhappy or questioning what you were doing or how did were you no. open you, you no no i was not unhappy or questioning what i was doing i was uh you know, I was exploring while I was in a busy mm -hmm. uh, OBGYN practice, I, I was still exploring beyond the limitations of the practice. That's why I was at that particular <laughs> retreat. And that's why I was involved in meditation. Okay. Uh, so yes, I was exploring, but I was not unhappy. With you were kind of, you were kind of dipping your toe into something new and you got yanked in. Yeah, you could say that. I mean, I was meditating uh, yeah, yeah. at 2 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I was on a spiritual path for sure, but not yeah. because I was dissatisfied with what yeah. I was doing. Uh, but when now that I was given that, that gift of divine grace, hmm. you know, your work is to heal with love in a way that is beyond description. It, it's truly a gift to be given that as a, as a mission in your life at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I, I, I needed to explore, you know, what, what was meant by that. And mm -hmm. so I went back uh, to my practice and I started to explore uh, what was going on. And I, I recount that story in, in, in the first book, Healing with Love, and also the second book, which is called, uh, you know, Forgiving Love, about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so I started to explore that. And, and then I felt, uh, in fact, that in order to really discover what this thing called love was and, and, and what healing was, I had to go into the laboratory and start right, to yeah. explore. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. fortunately, I had friends who were scientists in the Bay Area had a number of of, uh, of, of universities, and I started to work with them. Um, again, this, uh, <laughs> there are many stories about this, but I started to work with bacteria and cancer cells and DNA. And yeah, definitely. I definitely want to dive into the, the science a little bit. Um, and, I, I, and if we can do that now, if, you, if you'd like to, um, you know, dive into the, the research that you were running and what you were finding when it came to love and and the work that you were getting into well yeah we can do that uh, <clears throat> uh, if you feel that that's that's the right thing to do yeah well or or we can come back to it if you want to continue kind of sharing that i think that that would be great if you were to continue sharing your journey as it were yeah and then we can come back <laughs> well as it turned out about uh um, after this experience, your work is to heal with love about nine months later. And it's interesting that it's nine months because I'm a, you know, an obstetrician. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, I was at another retreat and uh, uh, there was a, uh, uh, a roommate that was assigned to me. He was uh, in his 30s. He was a composer of children's songs. And it turned out that he had uh, 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 cancer, uh, primary cancer of the uh, of the kidneys, and uh, and uh, there were also metastases to the lungs. And uh, during the first night, uh, I was awakened by the sound of him having difficulty breathing, and then. I could tell that he was in pain, so I got up and went over to his bed and I said, uh, can I help? And he said, anything, anything, doc. And I had no medication. And then I just spontaneously sat down on his bed and put my hands on both sides of his chest and visualized above my head a, a radiant sphere, a bright sphere like the sun. And then a beam of light descended through the top of my head down to the center of my chest. And then the, this bright energy flowed out from my heart 
up my shoulders, down my arms, and I recreated this radiant sun between my hands. This was all spontaneous. It wasn't, and there was no intention behind it. I was just guided to do this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I held my hands there for a few minutes, and, and then he said, ah, Doc, the pain's gone. He took a number of deep breaths, and he <laughs> fell asleep, and he slept well that night. And in the morning when he woke up, he said, Hey, Doc, you know, you're really a healer. And I thought, healing. What was that? I didn't know what happened. And I didn't know what was meant by healing in that sense. Uh, I knew what it meant in, a, in, the, in the medical sense of healing, but I didn't know what it meant in terms of your work is to heal with love. But I knew that something very profound had happened. And then I was determined to repeat this experience. And sure enough, I had a, a patient that came in and I, I was looking for opportunities to do this that would do no harm, either by omission or commission, because mm -hmm. that was the important, the important edict for, for us as, as, as physicians to do no harm. Yes, very, very relevant in today's world. Yes, omission, commission. So uh, this woman came in and she had uh, previously had uh, uh, an infection in her fallopian tube. Uh, and it had been resolved by antibiotics. And she had just gotten married and there, she was having a lot of pain. Uh, during it, of course, and it was affecting her relationship with her husband. I examined her, mm -hmm. and I felt that there was a, 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 a cyst, a fallopian tube cyst, uh, that uh, was adherent to the pelvic side wall. And I, I, it was large enough to offer her surgery, which I did. And she said, oh, is there anything else that we can do? I've just gotten married. Mm -hmm. And now, since this was a, uh, it was obvious that it was not uh, an infection, but a, what we call a sterile uh, cyst, and uh, um, a sterile abscess, you could say. Um, and so I, I said, uh, well, we could... Uh, and I knew, by the way, speaking about uh, doing no harm, that uh, if we, uh, since antibiotics would not help her at this point, uh, if we waited a week to do surgery, say, or uh, schedule her for surgery, there wouldn't be a problem. So uh, I said, well, we could do uh, energy work. And she said, well, what's that? And I didn't know. So <laughs> I figured let's that's figure all I do is exactly what it. happened yeah. What happened before, you know, with, with this other fellow. So, uh, yeah. so I, I said, well, let's just do it. And I recreated the same situation. I did a pelvic exam, felt the energy between my hands uh, and this radiant sun. And uh, when we were done, I said, fine, now I'd like to see you in a week because I figured that then we'd come back and we'd revisit the situation, see what else we could do. So a week went by and she didn't come back and I thought, uh-oh, we have a problem here, <laughs> you know. And uh, I said, I guess I just can't do this work in, in my practice, you know, I just... Um, so I kind of forgot about everything until again, a number of months later, I saw her name on the appointment sheet. And then when she came in, I examined her and there was no mass, no induration, no tenderness. And I said, well, I, I, you didn't come back, what happened? And she said, uh, well, after you, you, you worked with me, Everything got better, so I figured, why come back? Everything was fine. I said, oh, 
yeah. thank you very much. That's that's why all the patients never come back. It's just because they're all better. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what I try to tell myself. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway, so that was uh, was an important uh, awareness that I started to have about uh, about this energy work. But I, I and I, I continued to work with selective patients. But I realized after a while that there were so many variables working with. Uh, with people that uh, I decided to go into the laboratory and yeah. and start to work because the the most important variable of course was the placebo effect mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. think they're getting a medication and uh, between 30 and even up to 50 percent uh, respond as if mm -hmm. they're getting a medication that turns out to be um, either a sugar pill or an injection of a salt solution and such. Mm -hmm. so, so I decided to work with single-celled organisms, bacteria, uh, initially. And uh, one of the <clears throat> researchers that I worked with uh, specialized in Salmonella typhimurium. And uh, she, uh, she was a uh, biophysicist. Um, and so I worked with her, and uh, to start out, uh, I would look at the uh, at a petri dish full of salmonella, and while in preparation for working together, and as I was looking at the petri dish full of salmonella, I had what you could say was a, an epiphany, a realization just suddenly I realized that the same creator that created me created these bacteria mm -hmm. and had as much right to exist as I did. Mm. And when I had that realization, it was, I, I had with it a realization that uh, I had all these structures in consciousness that were denying that this organism had the same right to exist as I did. And it was just my medical training, my background, that filtered this connection between this consciousness that I am and the consciousness of the bacteria itself. And when those structures dropped away, there was just this consciousness and the consciousness of the bacteria resonating as one. We came into oneness. And then I realized that if I introduce an intention in this field of oneness, I can affect the behavior of the bacteria. And so my intention was to reduce its growth rate, not to kill it, because I just acknowledged that it had the same right to exist as I did, but just to reduce its growth rate. Yeah, I remember, I remember learning about this and just thought it was an amazing shift in perspective because, I mean, you go to the doctor and the doctor says, let's kill this virus, let's kill this bacteria, let's kill sure. this cancer. I'm a fighter, like we're gonna win. And, um, and you had this epiphany that that's just not the way that the universe is working here. That's right. In other yeah. words, commonly what happens, uh, and when I, when I worked with a number of psychics, I was able to verify this. When you focus on, uh, you know, whether it's a cancer cell or a bacteria, uh, with the intention of destroying it, there's a resistance to it because whatever exists wants to perpetuate its existence. Sure. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, on the other hand, when you focus on it and come into unity with it at the level of consciousness rather than the level of form, uh, you become one with it. And when you introduce an intention in that field of, of unity, uh, then, uh, then you affect the way it behaves. 
And uh, so, so that's what happened, that we were able to reduce the growth rate of the bacteria by 50% relative to controls. And we were using um, uh, a spectrophotometer to, to measure it, uh, its uh, optical density and growth rate mm -hmm. uh, in the laboratory. So, uh, so that was profound, that we could reduce its growth rate by 50%. When you do that, uh, and and uh, the, uh, let's say a bacteria is functioning in the body, uh, then the immune system can then kick in and take over and do what needs to be done. Sure. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what what um what was the could anyone do this, or was this a, a quote unquote special power that you had to to deliver the intention? Well, as I say, it was, it was, a, it was a realization and, and an epiphany. And again, it was, in one sense, it was a gift of grace. But then I wrote a book, which I mentioned before, called Dealing with Love, because that's what I learned as working in the laboratory initially with, uh, with the bacteria and then with cancer cells uh, grown in tissue culture and uh, also working with water and, uh, and DNA, uh, I learned that what you, what you want to do instead of attacking something mm -hmm. is connecting with it, which is another way of talking about love. Mm -hmm. See, what, what love is is, uh, is an awareness, a realization of oneness at the level of, of consciousness. In other words, beyond the level of form, uh, coming into resonance, into energetic harmony with whatever it is that you're focusing on, you need to accept its presence as it is. If you deny its presence or you attack it, you don't come into oneness with it. It's like, uh, uh, well, it's just- a me, a me versus them. Yeah. It's yeah. The, yeah. The and then there, exactly. Instead of, instead of, uh, instead of other, yeah. it's us. Yeah. And you come into yeah. oneness with it. And so that's what I had to learn. See, that was healing with love. I had to learn what healing with love was because it sounds paradoxical. Yeah. So you took it to the laboratory and, and figured it out. You figured and That's it what out. I had to do. Uh, yeah. uh, and it wasn't done as I say, through thought, because when you're, when you're coming into a loving resonance with something, it's not through thought. You introduce intention later, but the first thing is to come into resonance with it. And then I had to learn what that meant, how to right. open your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I, I find it. Heart. Yeah. I find it so interesting because I love uh, hearing stories of say spontaneous remission from cancer or you know spontaneous healing from various sure. you know incurable diseases and it sounds like a really really common theme throughout all of those experiences experiences for those individuals is is learning that this disease or this ailment has something to give them and then loving the disease loving the cancer loving the the autoimmune condition for, for that reason to learn and grow and and just realizing the gift in and uh so coming into you know those people seem to be coming into a place of coherence or connection with their well, condition yes exactly yeah. right well one thing i i should mention for some people because this word love is so loaded and you say love your cancer another way of saying the same thing is to unconditionally accept it yeah as it is yeah and because it's the acceptance that allows you to connect with it to merge with it to become one with it mm -hmm. so that you can change it yeah. if you it's like you know if you have a nail and you have a hammer but you the hammer never hits the nail you the nail is not driven into whatever it, it's supposed to wherever it's supposed to go so you have to connect with it. And if you unconditionally accept it as it is, and if you stop for a moment and consider this, if you unconditionally accepted yourself 
exactly as you are in this moment. No exceptions, none, without any judgments, without any focus on the past or the future, but 100% acceptance of yourself exactly as you are. How would you feel? And most people couldn't even imagine that. Yeah, but what no, you I, would I mean, feel yeah, is uncon- you would feel unconditionally loved. Yeah, well, I, um, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this because I, I feel like a lot of people refer to self love as this process or this journey of, you know, I'm, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. And it, and what are your thoughts on that? Because it seems like you just, it's not something you get better at. You just, you just are, you just be it, you do it. <laughs> when you come home yeah. to, uh, to who you really are. See, that's, and, and that's what, as I turned out, that, what was the meaning of, of, of healing? I just had to explore that. And, you know, one of the things that we look at when we use the word health or we use the word healing, uh, one of the things I realized was the word health is spelled H-E-A-L-T-H. But the first part of that word is heal. H E A L. Of course, yeah. And so health and healing are referring to the same thing, the same, it's a Germanic root, meaning wholeness. Right. Or the whole. And so uh, health and healing are, are bringing you back at the highest level of health and healing into wholeness, into a sense of oneness or connection with all that is, including the cancer cells and the bacteria, mm-hmm. you know. And so ideally, you're connected with all that is. And um, yeah. so what, what I wound up doing over the years since all of these explorations in the laboratory um, and also working with patients is I develop a system of healing that I call holo energetic healing, right. healing with the energy of the whole. And I developed a technology that allows people, including people, you know, from the medical profession and, and, and other professionals and therapists, and even people who uh, are not professionals, but want to, move along on the path of self-development uh, t- to follow this particular process of healing, healing a, a method of healing that goes right. <clears throat> back to the source yeah. of, of And one, one, of the, one of the steps in that process is um, I'm remembering the, the cardiac coherence, which you kind of spoke on before. And as I recall, it's something, it has something to do with the, uh, the energy fields of the heart and the energy fields of the mind kind of resonating in the oneness. Could you speak a little bit more what that means, the cardiac coherence? Sure. Well, yeah. uh, I had, uh, you know, uh, as, as you might have mentioned, uh, I was on the scientific advisory board of the uh, uh, Heart Math Institute. And uh, they did a lot of uh, beautiful work with, uh, with cardiac coherence. But basically, when you do that three-step process that we did at the beginning, uh, you start to uh, shift the energies of the heart from uh, 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 a state of incoherence where the energies uh, interfere with one another into a state of coherence where the energies start to uh, group together uh, in phase with one another and in groups of frequencies. Uh, and, and then the energy becomes what, what's called coherent and that energy uh, that's coherent is squared. So it's much more powerful than okay. incoherent energy. And of course, a laser is 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 coherent energy. It's it's usually it's one frequency, and that's uh, that's in phase, uh, and uh, and it's powerful enough to burn through uh, steel, 
Uh, sure. So this energy is, so the energy of love is coherent energy. And you can learn how to induce this coherent energy. And this coherent energy then is much more powerful than the energies of uh, incoherence, the energies of uh, uh, a fear and anger and uh, sadness. And these can, and th- these, if I'm understanding you correctly, these can be easily measured in some, with some device. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And oh it, yeah. And they, and that's what they were did that what they have been doing. That's what Heart Math developed yeah. and developed tools to measure these energies. Yeah, the the new tools, the the biofeedback sort of tools that allows people to have a direct connection with what their physiology is doing. You know, it's really fascinating because I think that humans really benefit from having that feedback. Look, you know, through a device. I think that some of us can kind of intuitively feel it but having a little bit of biofeedback i think can be really helpful yeah what are your thoughts on that yeah definitely getting the feedback is very 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 helpful sure yeah sure and uh, another way of talking about this is that uh, that that love at the highest level um at the vertical level is a realization of oneness And the opposite of that is the sense of separation. And what I found in my practice uh, was that most uh, illnesses, not all illnesses, but most illnesses, and all sense of, of distress and suffering came from a sense of separation, usually a sense of separation of one part of oneself from another that was too painful to hold yeah. in consciousness so it was yeah and if you think suppressed. about if you think about a common disease state there that's exactly what exists is um you know oh i've got that that bug that virus like oh i've got that cancer and it's and it, you're distinctly separate from it rather than you know realizing it as a part of the the oneness the wholeness from which you spoke of yes so, yeah yeah exactly and uh, because, you know, we're, we're here for a relatively short period of time. Could be 100 years if they extend the lifespan for a number of people. But that's just really a blink. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if while we're here, we can learn how through love to come into oneness, then we shift from a mortal to an immortal consciousness so because there's a part of us um, there's a part of us that is unmanifest that's invisible to us normally that's uh, the awareness of awareness itself it's like a, a fish swimming in the ocean not aware of the water or uh, or us moving around, in, you know, not aware of the air or the oxygen in the air until the oxygen is withdrawn. Then we become aware of it or for a fish until the fish is out of water. Mm-hmm. But we're immersed in this, you could say, ocean of awareness, but we don't have an awareness of it. So our work here. Uh, this lifetime or some other lifetime, if not this lifetime, is to become aware of this awareness. And Mm. that awareness of awareness is what we call consciousness. Without it... So that's it. That's the purpose of life. (laughs) Just to become aware. Yeah, and and that's that's the truth. Yeah. I mean, I I think that we tend to overcomplicate things. Exactly. (laughs) That's exactly right. So when I came to this realization or uh, awareness, and this is what is commonly called enlightenment, by the way, Uh, when I came, become, uh, became aware of that, I I developed uh, uh, processes which allow people in seminars that I give uh, to shift into this awareness. And it's been so profound. It's been the most wonderful thing 
that I can consider doing uh, in this lifetime yeah. as, as a doing process is to have created this and to see the impact on people's lives is so profound and so meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. I know that the work that you're doing is really getting out there and um, through the, through the seminars and you're facilitating teaching teacher trainings to teaching people how to, you know, conduct this work. And, and um, I'm curious in your experience with the holo energetic healing through either individual or, or group sessions, are there any particularly impactful experiences that you've had? Well, recently, um, there was one person who had uh, severe ulcerative colitis uh, with a lot of uh, bleeding mm -hmm. from her bowel and uh, was bedridden for five months. She had a young daughter and uh, she couldn't even get up to see her off to school or see her coming back from school. She couldn't cook and uh, and she had to be very careful what she ate. She was on medication, cortisone and, uh, and, and such. And we did a session together, a, a consultation on Skype. She was in the U.S. and I was in Switzerland. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, you could say a, a miracle occurred and she had a complete resolution of all of her symptoms. She hadn't been able to work for nine months before that, and five months bedridden. And it, it all resolved. And um, when she went to see her, one of her specialists, a gastroenterologist, who was one of the best in his field, you know, he, uh, he said, well, what, what, what happened? And she described what she had done in this process. And he said, oh, well, the symptoms will come back then, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's now been over a year. And she, had, uh, and she had stopped all her medications and so on. And now she's, uh, uh, she's doing sessions with other people. She's learned the process. She's, she's traveled over to Switzerland and to, to France and Belgium and has yeah. taken a number of seminars and is now eventually she will be teaching in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. So this is just one example of, of what can be done. There are people yeah. who have had heart disease and yeah, it's amazing. Uh, the stories. Rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so, you know, if, if by, by divine grace, it's meant to happen, then it will happen. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm curious because I'm sure that all sorts of people come to seminars or seek you out or a practitioner really in a state of desperation for healing and um, whether it's, you know, something acute or chronic from, if you could sum up what the keys are, is it just, you know, are there any keys that someone can keep? What can someone do to, potentiate their chances for a radical cure, <laughs> if that can be explained. <laughs> well, you know, there's one key, <laughs> yeah. and that is divine grace. Yeah. You see, and, uh, but, you know, there's an old saying that, uh, you know, God helps uh, he or she who helps themselves. And so help yourself by, you know, tuning in uh, resonantly to uh, your soul, that little voice uh, inside your head, not the thinking, uh, the thinking mind. You want to transcend the thinking mind and listen to the voice of your soul. And you do that, you, and we just did that at the beginning of the seminar by going through the heart rather than through the head. Right. Go through the heart and uh, do, do that three-step process or get get one of the books for giving love three words or healing with love you can go to amazon right you know read that and then if it inspires you you can con you can go to our website 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll be this sure is, to, to link up like all of those resources. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, sure. so the point is that, that, that this is the doing something, uh, you know, to help yourself uh, and then allow, allow, create that space for, for grace to come in. You right. open the space. You have to transcend the thinking mind and open yourself to uh, actually the key. <laughs> another key is to, if you can, unconditionally love yourself exactly as you are. Yeah, no, I think and, I think that's really beautifully said and summed up because um, I think a lot of people have noticed, um, you know, if they don't experience the physical physical cure that they're after, I feel like a lot of people feel like they've failed or feel like they haven't done well enough or feel like they're missing something. And um, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's it's really that's not always the goal but the the self the unconditional self love the unconditioned self love is is the goal exactly yeah and yeah and that's what that's what brings you home uh yeah. to a part of you that that ultimately is immortal that yeah, and, was here before you were born into this physical body yeah. and will continue when you leave this physical body, uh, and there are, of course, I mean, Anita Morjani wrote a wonderful book, uh, mm -hmm. Dying to Be Me, uh, where she uh, uh, had experienced the near-death experience uh, and, uh, and, and realized that the most important thing, the thing that caused her to have this stage four lymphoma was that she didn't love herself. Uh, unconditionally she had that realization mm -hmm. um, and I've had a number of uh, uh, students who uh, also had near-death experiences and when they came to some of my seminars they said for the first time all the years that she, they were looking to recreate that experience that they of, of unconditioned love in that near death state mm -hmm. that they found it in the seminars that yeah and now they're going out and teaching it and having incredible uh experiences as teachers um yeah yeah no it's it's really beautiful and amazing that you've been able to kind of facilitate so many experiences for you know it's, it's i can kind of see it rippling out into the world and um, yeah, you know, and I realize, by the way, it's not me mm -hmm. who does this, because I'm an instrument through which spirit, source, uh, grace comes through. Right. So I, 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 I'm very clear about that. It's not an artificial yeah. humility or modesty. It's just the truth. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I really hear that and understand that, and I'm curious. That leads me to. Um, ask what are some things that you do for yourself personally to to stay clear to stay you know a clear channel to continue facilitating to continue being an instrument well, of this work again yeah. it's grace <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's beyond the doing it yeah. it, it shifts into a, a state of being and again the grace I mean, the same thing that happened when, when, I, when I heard this voice that said, your work is to heal with love. You know, what I did was I was meditating at two o'clock in the morning and that, that's, that was my job. Mm -hmm. But then it came through. So that's all I can say is that I, I'm, I'm, I'm forever grateful yeah so so no no rituals or routines or anything to to remain in the state that you are well i i i'd say that what's important is 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 to uh, not clutter your mind with a lot of a lot of thinking not filling your mind with a lot of thinking if you can if you can allow 
space, that's, that's what you want to do and not pay attention too much to your thoughts. You know, there's a functional mind, which is, which is very important. It keeps you, you know, on time and making appointments and doing all this, paying your taxes. So there's a functional mind, but it's not really who you are. So mm -hmm. if you can learn to transcend your identification with the mind, just accept that thoughts come and go and you don't hold on to them. Yeah. And you're not the story, you know, and that's another thing. And who you are, if you know that, you know where you want to go, who you are is an awareness in which thoughts and feelings and sensations arise and subside. And then you point yourself to that awareness and then you become aware of that awareness. And that's what enlightenment is called. You know, to become aware of that awareness. Mm -hmm. And when you actually are it, not just conceptually, but when you are it, then you're home. And then uh, uh, an unconditioned love for yourself as you are naturally flows. And unconditioned love for others. It's, 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 and seeing the oneness in others the same consciousness in others that's in you, and the same consciousness in things, in nature. And that's what we call beauty, too, to see that oneness in, 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 in other things, as well as other people, which we call love. Yeah, I really, I really love the way that you articulate that. And, um... You know, I'm, I'm thinking back to some of the first times that I've connected with you and your work. And, um, you know, I feel like that a lot of people can, can do, can do their best to embody something, can, you know, take actions in the physical world and try to do, try to do. And it's all about doing, but I really love your cut through the chase cut to the chase point of just um just being there is what i'm what i've always experienced from you and what i'm you know realizing now again on a deeper level of just uh being in that oneness that we all experienced at the beginning of this um at this episode together yeah yes mm -hmm. so, and so there, are, um, there are ways yeah. to do that and, and that's part of uh, you know uh, as we said, you know, the God helps he or she who helps themselves. So that's what you can, how, that's how you can help yourself, you know, to, to prepare to follow mm -hmm. the path of the heart. Yeah. And of course, I think in today's society, a lot of people have troubles helping themselves. I think that most people would agree that it's a lot easier to help others than helping themselves or care for others than caring for themselves. But this well, whole, you see, yeah. and, 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 and part of that is the hope that if I love others, they'll in turn love me yeah. because I can't love me. And, and uh, you know, actually, <laughs> some of those feelings, uh, as I found out, go back to a time when we were in our mother's womb and we were picking up the feelings that our mother had about her sense of inadequacy, her confusions about love. Yeah. Yeah. These, uh, these issues are certainly intergenerational, you know, for sure. sure. I think maybe even part of the human condition, <laughs> maybe. Oh, even, absolutely. Yeah, it's you know. part of the human condition. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, leading into that, what, um, what sort of uh, words of wisdom might you have for someone stepping into this separate you know seeking healing on on these kind of holistic levels well you know um again i would encourage people to love themselves unconditionally that was mm -hmm. without any condition and uh, and that requires sometimes a, a forgiveness and so, so learn how to do that, and then you can learn how to share that. 
you know, because forgiving is confused too. People think that forgiving is about another person. Right. Say, you know, I, I forgive others for what they did, or I, I you know, or, or, or that I, I need to be forgiven by others. But really, the forgiveness that we're talking about takes place within you. And so true forgiveness is forgiving yourself this love that I was just talking about, and forgiving yourself the freedom from the past, uh, the freedom to be finally who you are. So it takes forgiving as well as unconditional love mm. to come home to yourself. And then it doesn't matter what you do. See, the doing will then just flow from the being. In other words, that's what will guide yeah. your doing. Not, yeah. not the conditioning of the society that you live in or the religion that you're practicing yeah. or your tribe. It will flow from source, yeah. and that's what will be your guide. And you'll listen through your soul and your heart, and then you'll just follow your heart, and then you'll be you'll be just fine. Yeah, no, I I, I kind of refer to it sometimes as an inside out approach rather than an outside in approach. I mm -hmm. think that we live in this outside in world where. I mean, our society wants us to think that all of our good feelings come from what we're buying, what we're eating, what we're, you know, all these things in the out, outside of ourselves. But I really love the way that you say, just be and just work on the inside. And then the outside, it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> sure. You see, especially yeah. in this world of what, what, what now what they're calling false you know, fake news, of course, and all yeah. this. And, yeah. and, you know, how much is devoted to marketing and advertising and business, oh, and, you know, yeah. how to, how to measure people by their net worth, you know, like how much are you worth? Uh, and that meant how much money have you accumulated? You know, yeah. that's not your worth. You know, yeah. that's not a measure of your worth. And as you say, that's the outside. And all these thoughts that bombard you, all these messages, and that's why uh, I was saying that the first thing is to move into the space uh, rather than the, in other words, the context rather than the content. Right. See, the context is what gives meaning to the content. Like just think of the word bark. And bark could be the bark of a dog, or it could be the bark of a tree. So just the word bark does, doesn't give you enough information. You have to go to the context to find the meaning of just that one word bark. Mm -hmm. In the same way, you have to go to the context of consciousness itself to derive a sense of meaning in this, in this life that you're living. You won't find it from the content. Everybody's got their own content, which they're trying to sell, their own agenda. Yeah. You know, you only have to look at uh, the newspapers or the TV or your iPhone, and you'll see how everybody is hawking their wares, trying to yeah. sell you something. Man, if it was just the newspaper and TV, that would be great. But nowadays, it's, yeah, it's so much everything. more than that. <laughs> it's everything. It's everything. Yeah. The good old days when advertisements were just on the newspaper and TV. <laughs> right. And that's why, that's why this, this is really important to, to know how to guide yourself home yeah. to who you really are. Yeah. So, so from your, all of the work, all of the experience, the best way to guide oneself home is the simple conscious heart focus. Correct. I mean, well, that's a start. Yeah, yeah, that's a start. And there are also a number of uh, other ways to facilitate it using breath. Um, and, um, um, you know, there, there are a number of processes and there, it, there's a lot of conditioning as you know, as you mentioned before, there's the human condition 
that we've been brought into where we were, we were born essentially helpless 24 seven in contrast to, you know, animals that right. are born and then have to run with the herd or they'll be, yeah. they'll be eaten in the savannah in, 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 in Africa. But, you know, we're born and we're so dependent on our caregivers for survival that we look to our caregivers uh, for that survival. And then ultimately we look to others for that love. And what we have to learn is to, uh, to give that love to ourselves first. Then when we, we can give that love to ourselves, then we can truly give to others instead of giving to others so we can get yeah. what we call love or attention or acknowledgement in return. Yeah, you know, what's coming to me right now is uh, I love that that point that you made about humans being so, the, you know, at, from a young age being so dependent on their caregivers. So what's coming to me is that we all really need to just grow up. <laughs> we just sure. need to we just need to grow up and, and step into our divine responsibility to take care of ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. And part of the part of the way that you can do that and love yourself is, is through this forgiveness process that I mentioned, where in the forgiveness process, what you do is you actually forgive yourself as a child, an adolescent, teenager, and as an adult mm -hmm. for all the things that you did that were not loving to yourself or others and all the things that you felt ashamed of or guilty about, mm -hmm. all the things that you regret or have remorse about. And then you actually picture them in front of you, all three of them in your mind. And then you, as part of this process, you embrace them and you bring them into your heart and you feel the forgiveness and the love that you have for them. All is forgiven. And I love you. Mm -hmm. Welcome home. Yeah. And you feel this deep, deep forgiveness for all these parts of you that have been separated from you by all the, the feelings and thoughts that you have and all the self-judgment that you have and all the judgments that others have had for you. And you bring them home into your heart and then you're free from the past. And that's what you have to do. You have to do these steps. Uh, now, sometimes it can happen spontaneously, like a spontaneous remission that you mentioned. But this is part of what you can do to help to align yourself with source, to bring grace into your life. It's not the only way, but it's, it's a way that really has worked for a number of yeah. people. So, yeah, so I really love the byproduct of the, the self-forgiveness is just the unconditioned love because that's all that's... Exactly. And, um, and what's really always so amazing and I guess ironic in, in many ways is that all of these, you know, self-judgments that we are forgiving ourselves for are just simple misunderstandings or misinterpretations or illusions, you know? It's all just fake news. <laughs> exactly. That's true. It's all fake news. That's, yeah. that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, well, um, I guess we can, you know, go ahead and wrap up. If, if you've got any, sure. you know, final words of, of advice for, and also a means um, for people to connect with you, I'll, like I said, I'll share, I'll share your uh, links to your website and where you're at, but I know you're over there in Switzerland, anything coming up in this continent? Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't have any plans uh, uh, to give any seminars in Switzerland. I mean, in, uh, in the U.S., mostly uh, Switzerland and uh, Belgium and, uh, and France okay. at, this, at this point. But uh, if people want to learn more, they can go to uh, on my website, which I know you'll be yeah. talking about in a moment. But on my website, go to the resource section 
and, uh, and, and then go down to uh, videos. And there are maybe about seven or eight videos on different subjects and topics, which I think if people want to explore more, they can do that. Excellent. And, and then, of course, the books that, that I'll, um, you know, share and in, the books. in there as well. Okay, Len. Well, you know, it's been, it's been lovely connecting here. And I'm so grateful for the wisdom that you share with us. And, um, yeah, looking forward to sharing this episode into the world because I think, uh, I think the world needs more of you. <laughs> Ah, uh, thank you, thank you, yeah. and the world needs more of you too. All right, we're we're and stepping your up. Beautiful life. <laughs> all right, well, all right. Peace and love, everybody. Until next time.